We began uh, the service with the collect with what I think are some pretty bold statements. Full of faith. O oh God, the strength of all who put their trust in you. Really? I mean, do we profoundly believe that as we put our trust in him, that he is providing us with the very strength that we need to live out what is in fact an impossible task. Mm -hmm. And that's the task of just being Christian. Um, it seems to me that the fact that God can provide that strength for us has been demonstrated to us in Jesus. Not just as the one who died and rose again, but the one who, as human, fully human, fully divine, died and rose again. That's why the Gospel reading today is so important if we're going to appropriate the meaning of this collect. They, one is sort of like the Gospel is theology, the collect is application in that sense. The Gospel reading comes, this eighth chapter of Mark is the pivotal point in the Gospel of Mark. It's not just that it divides the 16 chapters in half. It's actually the turning point for the whole gospel. Up until that point, there's no open declaration of the Messiahship of Jesus by anyone, except in Mark's introduction, the gospel of the Son of God, the Messiah. And so we're sort of seeing all these things happen that certainly point to the truth of that declaration the healings, the exorcisms, the profound things that Jesus teaches and says. But so far, nobody's come up and just said, you're the Christ. That hasn't happened yet. Until now, this gospel reading. And it's pivotal that they are where they are, Caesarea Philippi, a, villa, a town in fact built in honor of the deification of Caesar. That's where the big temple was. That's where they said, Caesar is Lord. And so it's not coincidental that the very geography of where this conversation takes place points to its pivotal importance. That Jesus, to call Jesus Lord, to declare him to be the Messiah, the Christ, the Son of the living God, is both the heartbeat of Jesus' <coughs> message and the heartbeat of our faith. But it's a certain kind of Lord Messiah. And see, that's immediately where the disciples got tripped up. Jesus begins to teach to them. You know, he says, don't say anything. Why? Because they still don't get it yet. <laughs> Not what he's really talking about. And so he begins to explain, who is this Messiah? This is a Messiah, and Mark is so specific. He will suffer greatly, is the word that's used. And it gives the list. Rejection by the scribes and elders, beaten, and eventually killed. No wonder you see Peter is absolutely scandalized. Oh Lord, this must ever happen to you. But Jesus is so sharp in his rebuke, precisely because any other understanding <coughs> of Jesus as Messiah is not the gospel, but in fact a demonic counterfeit. Which is why he, it is like, get behind me, Satan. You're speaking as Satan's proxy here. Because you see, if Jesus did not really die completely, then there is no one who can triumphantly lead us through the gate of death. And if Jesus is not completely and fully resurrected from the dead, a physical as well as spiritual reality, in other words, no ghosts here, the point is, there is no one to welcome us into the gate of eternal life. The kind of Jesus, Messiah Jesus is, is critical to what we believe and what we know to be true. So that no matter what we are enduring, including death itself, we can say with Cranmer, you are the one we can put our trust in you, and you are the strength of those who put their trust. In other words, the fact of Jesus as a suffering Messiah who completely died, and the fact of a Messiah who is fully, completely resurrected from the dead 
is the historic substance that gives us the ability in the place of our need to say you are the strength of those who put their trust in you. Because he has done everything necessary to pour out upon us the very strength that we need. If you don't have that clear understanding of Jesus as, as Messiah, fully dead, fully risen, then in fact you're believing in somebody other than Jesus, no matter who you're talking to in your prayers. So please, don't buy into anything less than that. You know, a drugged, resuscitated Jesus who didn't actually die. Or a Jesus who spiritually appeared to his disciples but did not bodily resurrect himself from the dead. It didn't end here. And it's not who he is. You see, the danger of these kinds of false theologies is that it actually leads us to talk to someone other than the Lord of heaven and earth. And I don't know who that is, but I don't want to be talking to anything like that. <laughs> Do you follow my dread? <laughs> it is grounded. We grounded in what actually has happened. Putting our faith in one who is all that he says he is. That gives us the ability in the midst of our need to say, Oh God, you are the one who gives us the strength that we need as we trust in you. And believe me, I don't know what you go through, but that's just what I need. Amen. Amen.